And uh, I, I like that. It's very old school. And then they open the door. Then you go into Mrs. Fish. Now, I'm telling you, you like sushi, right, Phil? I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm telling you, you got to go into this place. Uh, I like sushi, too. So this is the place, huh? Oh, 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 man. It's really good. And the cut rolls are delicious. The service is, is second to none. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. Just delicious, and and the service is saying, "What the hell am I doing?" I, all of you people are preempting all of the things what I want to say. Yeah, but I hear that the service is second, and I'm only kidding. Yeah, yeah ha, ha. look at her; she's trying to see. You encourage her, and then she comes with the jokes, and I'm standing here. There is a bum within 50 miles that'll doff his cap to me after some some joker like this makes makes garbage out of what I'm trying to say. All right, Frank. So that's nice. So anyway, then you got done uh, eating at Mrs. Fish. Yeah. Then we got done, and uh, Bill says, well, how about a cocktail? And I said, there are worse things in this world. And she said, you lead the way, and I gave her the thumbs up. And I made a mental midget, not mental midget, I made a mental, I said mental midget point, because if I make a mental midget point, it's not a very good one, and I really ought to forget it. And I thought I was making a mental midget point, and then I realized i got to graduate it up to the... Uh, so you're making a, a note to yourself. Yeah, I'm making a note to myself. To bring the wives, I said, Bill, we got to bring the girls. And she said, oh, yeah, uh, her wife is Carrie, and he loves uh, sushi. I said, well, i got to bring my wife. He's uh, very much a sushi fan, too. So anyway, we go upstairs to perch. Uh, and Margaret uh, was with me just one evening. Uh, we, we didn't stay very long when I was up there. Was, there was actually not a lot of people there because it was um, sort of in the off hours in the afternoon, and it wasn't at night. No, they, I'm going to take Margaret there this weekend. And uh, I'll, I'll take him through the doors, and the doorman will go, Milady, and... <laughs> Frank, you know... What? Get a load of her, will you? <laughs> Sounds to me, Phil, like as you were responding to me, somebody was giving you a lip job or something. Look, Gray, we're on the air here. All right, I'm sorry. Frank, so you went upstairs to Perch. Yeah, we went upstairs to Perch. And you overlook the entire cityscape. Now, when you overlook San Francisco, you see the bay. When you overlook New York, you see the beautiful boroughs, and you see the beautiful skyline and the rivers. When you overlook Chicago, you see Lake Michigan. When you overlook Atlanta, you see... Well, anyway, when you overlook Miami, you see beautiful ocean. When you overlook L.A., all you see is Skid Row and... Well, that's not entirely true. Excuse me, were you at Perch? I didn't see you there. No, I wasn't. Is she laughing at me? Well, she, I mean, he was a little bit. That was great, but, I mean, come on. You're, you're telling a really good tale. Go ahead. Uh, it's not a tale, Robert. It's, a, it's the true, it's the, right, it's the right thing. Yeah, no, but I, what Robert's saying is I'm interrupting and I shouldn't. Yeah, well, there. Yeah, she made a point. That's a good point, Robert. Uh, when you see downtown, but wait a minute. What, what do you mean she's making a good point? Yeah, no, you said it. I did. Yeah. So when you see downtown and it's Skid Row and buildings, but it's uh, refreshing because it's the first time that you go downtown and you see anything other than some guy walking along with a backpack talking to himself, you know. So uh, for me, and, and Angel's, how many times can you go up Angel's flight? Now, when we talk about downtown L.A., now that's a good point. If you go to L.A. and you want to actually do the tourist thing and you, and you actually want to go to downtown Los Angeles, uh, anybody that would make a point of that obviously knows what they're getting into. It's a rundown. Um, it's it's historic. Let's put it that way. Well, as you see, that's what they say. When they want to tell you that a place looks like it's a lean, you know, it looks like it was, it was going to fall down tomorrow and it was built and, and it's got nothing but bums vomiting into a sewer and a guy babbling to herself and going, yeah, 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 yeah with a backpack and a Mickey Mouse hat. It's, it's, uh, so that's, but they say it's historic. And well, the point being that uh, it's very old and you're going to see a lot of uh, the blight. There's, there's city blight or inner city blight. Well, it's, it's downtown blight. But it's changing, and that's the point that uh, Phil wants to make and that I'd like to make. And so far, we haven't made it at all very good because we're making garbage out of this segment. All right, so getting back to Perch. Getting back to Perch. So you go up and you overlook the downtown Los Angeles. And uh, let, me, let me ask you something, because I know the kids want to know this. Now, why do you call it Los Angeles? Do you, you call it because a lot of other people do? I call it Los Angeles in honor of Mary Yorty, but also uh, Bob Mitchum. Uh, Mark, you remember Bob Mitchum, don't you? Well, I know the actor, yes. Oh, you, you never met her. I, I knew Bob Mitchum glancingly, very faintly. I, I can't say that I was a friend of hers, but I knew her to see her, and we'd say, you know, we'd give each other you know, a salute, and yeah, you know, knew, we knew each other to be power players. 
Anyway, Bob Mitchum used to uh, occasionally when I, you know, saddle up to her in a bar, and I'd say, "Hey, Bob, how you doing?" And she'd turn and ignore me to make you know believe like, "Wow, who's this?" You know, I hope they they don't think that I'm with her. And then then she'd turn around and say, "Hey, how you doing, Frank?" And really, he would do that to you, huh? Oh, uh, just just as a gag. Uh, but I would say, uh, how are, I, I would say just for laughs because I'd have somebody with me. I'd say, "Hey, Bob, where, what city are we in again?" It's Los Angeles, and I go, "Ha ha, see Los Angeles." And, Yo, all right, so anyway, that story's been told about 9,000 times. All right, well, the man asked me, didn't she? The man asked me, and I answered her. Okay, Frank, so thanks. So now you're overlooking downtown Los Angeles, or Los Angeles, if you will. You call it anything you want, but you're overlooking downtown Los Angeles, and you go, okay, well, there it is. Then you turn around and you get another drink. So, but I would say I would highly recommend Perch, beautiful view. And, uh, well, what you see is, if, if I may, Frank, you also see the mountains. You see the mountains past Chinatown. You're heading toward, looking toward Pasadena. That's true, yeah. And and then you also see, for instance, the buildings. We have uh, Wil- one Wilshire and uh, a lot of new, a lot of new high rises going up. Well, uh, they're all renamed buildings, and uh, you know, and of course, the Bank of California uh, Stadium is there. That's where the L.A. Football Club plays, which you had season tickets for, and you used like one time, and Don kept sending the money back. Yeah, I understand. Well, I got very busy this season, but uh, congratulations. Decent season. I say more than decent season for the L.A. Football Club. Uh, All right, so let's not get into that. Uh, well, I just want to say, you know, that they did they did good. Yeah, they lost in the semifinals. So anyway, uh, make a long story short. What do you mean the semifinals? The conference finals. Yeah, so make a long story short. So Perch is outstanding, and uh, we park there. Uh, Phil, you know about it, too. Well, you park there in the Pershing Square garage. It's a huge parking garage. They've got a great service there. The uh, If you lose your ticket or if you don't know where you are, there's there's security offices everywhere. Uh, there are people that are ready to help you. You can also, and I didn't know this, I bought a ticket. No, wait, I am the guest, so am I going to... Uh, Hold on, Frank. All right, but I, she brought me on for a reason. All right, Frank, but I, can I just say this one thing? Is that It happened to me this morning. I was... Uh, this morning? So you did spend the night. And anyway, I had the ticket. Uh, what are you making it sound like Phil spent the night in a gutter down there? Well, where did you? You didn't sleep in one of the flop houses, did you? No, I didn't. So I got my ticket. What I should have done, and what you can do when you park there in the garage, and you're ready to leave, don't put your ticket into the exit machine until you go to your... Uh, they've got these machines there where you can pay, and then go to your car. Yeah, so you get off the escalator or whatever, and there's the machine. You pay for your parking, then take the exit ticket they give you. See, that's the mistake you made. Yeah, I, I was trying to get out with the ticket that I'd purchased. Oh, that's a very... That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't use that. And yeah, you're right. Uh, Phil's right. They have all kinds of people there. Weird. Yeah, everything is just, just. No, but it, it was it was it was cool. Um, uh, God damn! Did you hear that? Yeah, Phil. Yeah, Phil. You uh, you're not you're not bucking for pork pig, are you? Uh, that's just a joke there. Me pork pig. But my pork pig. Yeah. No, I'm not bucking for pork pig. Uh, God, just spit it out at me. No, I'm not bucking for pork pig. Jesus, Phil, you sound very angry. Thanks a lot, Frank Gray. Hey. Now, Phil, you know he hates that. I know he hates it, but I'm sorry. I got to get out of it, man. Jesus H, man. All right, coming back for that's that's uh, interesting though. And and uh, Frank's right. That sushi restaurant. Oh, it's fantastic. And um, we had the cut rolls and the specialty rolls too. Okay. Like which one did you have? I don't remember. All right, um, but uh, well, you remember? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, I'm a big. When I eat sushi, all I like is spicy tuna, spicy salmon. Never said you all have spicy stuff. Yeah, I, I only eat the cut rolls. Eat spicy tuna, spicy. I hate that crab meat. I'll kill if they put that crab meat in the rolls that I order. Thank you. <laughs> well, why don't you tell me? A lot of it's that artificial crab. It tastes. I hate. I don't like mayo, man. That's what I don't dig. I don't want any mayo anywhere near any damn sushi roll. I eat. <laughs> All right, bud, we get it. But um, thank you, bud. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, so, yeah, I dig that. And then, but last night, oh my God, they cooked up a roll I'd never had before, man. Now I'm not a meat eater, but I got to admit, I went ahead and I tried it. And when I say meat eater, a red meat eater, um, this was a. Uh, it had steak and lobster. It, uh, oh, you're kidding? No. Oh God, was it good, man? With the little rice wrap and all that stuff. So. Yeah, check it out. It's called Mrs. Fish. And then upstairs, go upstairs to the bar upstairs, which is Perch on the on the roof of the uh, the building there. And just below that, and I think that's where we went. Uh, they, they were closing, but after we left Perch, we went downstairs one level, 
And that was the restaurant. That was the, the French restaurant. And they have a patio. Oh, they've got a beautiful uh, patio that overlooks. And do you know what I saw? I don't know if you saw this. Off the back patio of, uh, of Perch, looking toward uh, south, toward downtown, are two radio towers. Did you see those? I missed them. KRKD. You've got to be kidding me. KRKD. That's what KISS became. That, yeah, they became KISS. Yeah, that's what I mean. That was the old KISS, the old call letters for KISS AM and FM, right? Yes, there was KRKD FM. And they were, uh, like a lot of stations in the 60s, they were a whole lot of nothing, you know. Yeah, the thing about KISS that I don't know a lot of people know here in Los Angeles, or, and KISS is a pretty well-known station across the country. Now, you're getting off of downtown. General, let me just take it where it goes, all right? Yes, Mr. General. And what do you mean, Mr. General? I mean, yeah, General. Mr. Henry likes to take it where he wants to go with it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead, William S. Burroughs, with your stream of consciousness. Wow. Well, there's a real uh, name. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I was a real nut. Who's Bill, who's Bill Burroughs? Who's Bill Burroughs? So, um, yeah, KRKD is what was KISS, AM and FM. And you're right, Margaret, there wasn't... Uh, well, the stations in those days were, weren't much to listen to, but uh, and I can't even tell you what KRKD did. But they began to change into a sort of a top 40 pop format, and then they became KISS AM. And KISS AM was... Um, was KISS before there was a KISS FM. Uh, so I remember listening to that station going to the beach because um, it was like on AM. And in those days, it was, it was a toss-up whether your, your car or your friend's car had... Uh, what are you doing, Phil? Trying to get this damn... Oh, there. It was a toss-up whether your car or your friend's car had FM. Believe it or not, folks, in, in those days, FM was not standard. Uh, you had an AM band radio. They, they thought they were really doing you a favor there. But when FM came into high demand, then cars started getting... AM, 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 never mind. AM and FM Radio. AM and FM Radio. All right, coming up, Chris Norton and the legend of Beef Heaton here on the world-famous Phil Henry Show. The world-famous Phil Henry Show, brought to you by... Hey, everybody, this is Ted Bell, and we are releasing now the best of the Prime Rib Room. Yeah. That's right, Ted's of Beverly Hills releasing on CD the best, and for download, too, of the Prime Rib Room, featuring the Dunphy Brothers. I'm the moon of baby. Yeah. Where'd you get those? Yes, the best of the Prime Rib Room, featuring the Dunphy Brothers, and big, big hits like this one. me think you cared for me. Or how about this one? If you knew Susie like I know Susie. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Ouch. Yeah, the best of the prime rib room from Ted's of Beverly Hills. Available on CD or download from me, Ted Bell. Ted's of Beverly Hills. Come on down. Yes, go on down to the uh, purchase counter at Ted's of Beverly I don't know where it is. Where do they? It's, it's somewhere in the... Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for nothing, Mr. Announcer. Here at Ted's, we want to put our meat in your mouth. Uh-huh. Welcome back to the world-famous Phil Henry Show on El Pacifico in Southern California. Here's Mr. Henry. Uh, what, are you too cool for the score or something, bud? Yeah, I'll just... Call it. Right, anyway, thank you. What do you mean by that? Oh, he's old. Here's Mr. Henry. You're getting just a little bit sloppy there, bud. Well, you know, I was, I was, hung, I was, I was thinking about, you know, going out and getting some burgers or something because I'm getting hungry. Everybody's talking about sushi. Yeah, but where are you going to go? Wait a minute, man. We're in the middle of the show here. Uh, where are you going to go? Thinking about going out of Bob's. Oh, if you go to Bob's, can you... Wait a minute. If you go to Bob's, can you, uh... I'll write the order down and you can go after the show's over. All right. So, uh, it's like everybody's hungry. Yeah, kind of. I am a little bit. Chris Norton is joining us here on our Newsmaker Line tonight. Chris is um, an aspiring adult filmmaker and actor and uh, is going to be talking about... And, I, you know, not traveling in these circles, Chris, uh, forgive me, but I don't know the name Beef Heathen. Uh, I mean, it's all right, but uh, I think... Um I think you will. I think in the coming days, weeks, you know. Beef Heathen was a top-notch film, adult film actor. Yeah, he was known in those circles. I would say, yeah. I mean, where Beef, Beef Heathen was very big with uh, with with the uh, new, I would say, the new uh, gen, gen, generation Z, Zeninials, you know, but I mean by that, Mr. Henry. No, I don't. What is a Zeninial? A generation Zeninial. They're millennials, but they're Gen Z. They're even younger than millennials, but not, they're not total Gen Z. You know. Well, what's the young? Who's younger, millennial or Gen Z? Uh, I think millennial, but 
What do you mean you think, man? I mean, wh- where is this guy's audience? The guy's audience is with people that have just turned 21 and are about to, and then he loses them when they turn 22, or he did lose them. I mean, now, I'll probably be his famous.